All right, so let's talk about what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2023. My name is Marcus. I've been with MLC CAD Systems for 15 years. Uh, most of that as an AE for SOLIDWORKS, uh, but now I'm doing marketing. Uh, so basically a lot of the same things, except I'm doing them more on the internet than face-to-face. -face. MLC CAD Systems has been around 40 years. Now, 40 years is no small thing for a technology company, especially when you consider that Dassault Systems, parent company of SOLIDWORKS, and CNC Software, who makes Mastercam, are also both 40 years old. So we've been around since the beginning. We helped to build and grow these technologies over the years, and we're proud to be uh, one of the largest resellers of SOLIDWORKS and Mastercam. We're number one in Mastercam in the world, number one in SOLIDWORKS in the South. We have offices all over the U.S. because we want to be near you. We want to understand more about your local industry and the user base. Uh, but we also are able to provide uh, training and services as well as 3D experience nationwide. So if there's anything you need and you want to see what we can do to help you out, don't hesitate to contact us anytime. Today's webinar, we're going to go through the top level benefits and improvements, but this is not a training class. We're not going to teach you how to do all the new stuff. So for that, we're going to go to YouTube. Uh, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications and you'll start to see these tutorials and these longer demos that we'll release over time to show you how to really take advantage of this. Anyone who has attended the day's event is going to get a link to be able to see those sooner and if you attend a live event you'll get those tutorials as well. Now, speaking of live, live events we're going to have a bunch of them across the United States. We're going to have experts on hand to help you to understand these improvements better, to explain them in more detail, as well as to get hands-on. We're going to bring some computers running 2023. You can actually open the files we're working with, test it out on your own, and pull up something to have a conversation. And we're going to have plenty of time during the presentation to make sure you have the ability to do that. Food and drinks, uh, if you've never been to a launch event for SOLIDWORKS uh, from MLC CAD Systems, you're truly missing out. But let's get right into the action. We're going to start with Roland Robles. Uh, he's one of our many experts who are going to kind of guest host and show you what's new in certain areas of the product. He's been with us for 10 years out of Dallas, and let's take a look at how the interface has changed and some of the new features in 2023. We significantly improved the user experience with SOLIDWORKS 2023. Communicating with your team is vital to success. A great way to do this is through the use of comments. With SOLIDWORKS 2023, you can emphasize text using the bold, italic, or underlined modifiers. Adding a screenshot to a comment is just a click away. You can also add images from your local machine to give your comment even more context. In this case, we can also modify the background color to indicate red for a comment that's going to suggest that this is a safety issue. These labels can of course be customized to even add more clarity. If a comment is critical, you can set them to appear when the document is open. It's no secret that SOLIDWORKS has the most customizable interface of any CAD application. Have you customized too much? Or maybe you want a fresh start? you can now easily restore the default settings by using the reset to defaults that is found in each tab of the command manager or all customizations. And of course, we must talk about performance. The render system released in 2019 to improve frame rates during pan, zoom, and rotate has been dramatically optimized. We listened to a lot of the feedback and resolved many of the issues, and now you'll have a greater reliability with the enhanced graphics performance options checked on, so that way you can realize faster frame rates when viewing large assemblies or parts with complex geometry. In this case, you can see the comparison side by side. I love those comments, being able to kind of throw them up on the part as something really important and say, hey man, if you open this file, I need you to be slapped in the face with this issue or with this note to make sure it gets taken care of. And if anybody was having issues with that graphics performance, those should all have been resolved in the 2023 release. Uh, so across the board, people should see some fantastic performance. Uh, let's keep this going with parts and features. Uh, we'll go up to Kansas City with Braxton Kirsting. 
On this handle, I want to put the model name and the best way to do that is always with single line font for inscriptions. And now the wrap tool can handle those single line fonts on our cylindrical surfaces so we can represent that three dimensionally. Library features have always been great as well to show consistent, repeatable features. Uh, but sometimes you may not have the right reference geometry, such as this logo requiring kind of like a rectangular uh, straight edges to position it. Now I can manually modify this so that it's actually cutting some material, can rebuild successfully, instead of modifying the library feature itself. Now the handle here, the grip is pretty smooth. Let's give it some traction to hold on to. Uh, we're going to create a pattern of these ellipses, and in 23, we see the ellipses now have the ability to add that construction geometry. So what does that mean? That means single click to make horizontal. You know, if we're doing things like dimensioning the overall width, the height, we can use those construction lines to make that dimension with a single selection. Now with this single body, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it around at an angle and, and stagger it. And I'm going to create that stagger with the move copy body command. Now this feature, typically we couldn't do any equations, but in 23, we can create links to those global variables. And that's going to make iterating through our design much easier using the equation manager. With the automatic rebuild option enabled, I can key in new values here, see that live update on my model, and overall make the best design that I can more efficiently. Now, with all those pattern bodies and the text, I'm definitely uh, creating a lot of detail here that I may not need in the top level assembly. The D feature tool has always been a great way to remove this extra stuff that just, you know, is goes against best practices for large assembly design and we want to simplify it. And in 23, we can actually create new configurations within the same model. So we're not we're reducing our lifecycle management of these files, uh, the overhead. So now in our assembly, we can switch that active config and that configuration is derived. So any changes to the default are going to trickle down into my new D feature derived configuration. So one of the things I want to point out uh, is that those library features, you create references ahead of time to, to make it easier on you. But if there's a rebuild error, it would have blocked you in the past and says, no, fix those rebuild errors or build a different library feature. Now it's going to let you say, hey, man, just trust me. Keep on going. I'll fix it down the road. It's a very simple fix, super easy to work with. And the working with ellipses, I, I can't tell you how many times I've had to select multiple points over and over again to make them horizontal or vertical. Um, and move copy body is my jam. Uh, these all are going to create uh, much faster, much more robust models with a lot less effort. Let's keep it going with some more favorites. Sheet metal, weldments, and structure systems. For that, we're going to go to James Frick out in Atlanta. He's been with MLC CAD Systems 24 years. So let's see what's new in sheet metal and weldments. This track setting machine has a hydraulic guard that needs to be extended to further protect these couplings from heavy equipment and falling debris during operation. Opening the sheet metal part, we can easily extend the front of the part two inches to cover the coupling. But notice that when making these changes, we have an error that pops up or a warning. New for Sheet Metal 2023, specific sensors can be created to dynamically warn us a flat pattern of the sheet metal part exceeds the width, length, area, bounding box, and blank values for the part. The new feature saves redesign time and catches costly mistakes so your sheet metal parts will sail through manufacturing. By reducing the outer dimension of the part, we see the, the warning goes away. When this part was originally created, a sketch was used for the initial base plan where all bins were dimensionally equal. But when accounting for material thickness, it results in different radii inside and outside. That's a problem for manufacturing as it results in additional machine setup. Now in 2023, we have the new symmetry option, which will change the sheet metal to a mid-plane extrusion and create identical inside and outside resultant bin radiuses. We use the gauge table for the sheet metal part. Now in the drawing, we can add directly the cutlass properties, preventing the need to create any global variables or equations. 
As we're preparing to ship this machine, we'll need to build a sturdy, reusable shipping crate. SolidWorks Structure Systems will use to build the steel crate in a combination of 3D sketches for primary members and reference planes for secondary members. By default, all these corners are mitered, which is great for some applications, but for this crate, we'll need to change the corner treatment to make it easier to build. Structure Systems now automatically groups similar corners, applies the same corner treatment, and these purple arrows that indicate the like corners. Using the new zoom to selection command, we can verify that the trim order is exactly what we want. To strengthen the corners, we'll add a connection element like this gusset. New in 2023, we can also pattern to similar corners again, indicated by the purple arrows. We may want to build a more durable crate with larger square stock. We can now use configurations to change the particular member profile to suit our need. I love those sensors in sheet metal and the gauge annotations for the drawings. Uh, but I really want to point out something he did kind of fast um, because it's not new. But did you notice that when he created that structure system, he said primary member and just box selected an entire sketch or series of sketches and it just boom, just created that, that frame. Then the secondary members were super easy just by clicking on a plane and then grabbing the vertical members to connect. And then the corners, just modify one corner and all corners automatically update that are similar in shape and orientation. So really, really powerful capabilities for, for uh, 2023. I cannot wait to take full advantage of those. Uh, let's start talking about marketing, right? We want our products to be successful and make us money and, and grow the companies. And so Visualize is going to help us to create those assets. Let's kick it over to Rick Brain out of Phoenix, Arizona. Enhancements in Visualize 2023 start from the beginning of the process. Selecting an import option is an important step that sets your project up for success. Visualize 2023 improves this process by filtering the most relevant options for SOLIDWORKS files. This simplifies our decision to a single question. Do we want the individual control that component part body provides or the convenience of grouping all same appearances into a single part? The component part body option works in similar fashion to the automatic mode of past releases, but has been updated for this release with one important difference. This import option now mimics the SOLIDWORKS assembly structure while retaining appearance control in Visualize. This is an ideal situation as Visualize users can take better advantage of groupings such as subassemblies already defined in the SOLIDWORKS model. Putting your designs in context can go a long way in immersing your viewer in your world. Visualize has always been able to take advantage of nearly any kind of geometry you can get your hands on. In 2023, we'll see that the standard import options are still available for any non-SOLIDWORKS files such as this GLTF file. It's common practice to improve performance by making use of preview mode while setting up your scene, especially if it involves complex or high detail models. However, this can result in a lack of feedback on how your setup is interacting with the lighting. In Visualize 2023, the handling of PBR material previews has been improved, providing a much better idea of how light will react with roughness maps, alpha transparency, and other characteristics. We see light from the HDR glistening off the wet spots of our trail model, allowing us to be much more confident in our setup while still enjoying the performance benefits of preview mode. Any advanced PBR options such as height maps will be added on top when rendering resumes. A common use case for rendering is to create an arrangement of colors showing a variety of potential color options. Previously, it was a bit more time consuming to track down all the necessary colors, codes, swatches, and references and then trying to match them all and visualize. With a dramatically improved color picker, this is likely now the easiest part of the process. With this update, we can bring in colors from nearly every source you could think of. A dedicated tab for color palettes has been added along with a few default palettes. Custom palettes can be imported directly from SOLIDWORKS from an Adobe ACO file, a logo as a vector file, or from a web page CSS or HTML file. Whatever you have access to, you'll be able to extract company or project specific colors directly in Visualize. 
Once imported, you'll have full control over your palettes as well. Searchable names are present and the swatches can be applied immediately. The color dialog now unlocks and remains available for subsequent actions until it's closed. In cases where the colors are not available to be imported, they can be added in similar fashion to previous releases. On the Color tab, color can be selected with a graphical display and the Hue slider is now present in RGB as well as HSV. The ability to simply paste a hex code has now been added, as well as CMYK definition for print applications. As always, the color picker itself can be used to select a value anywhere on your screen, and its color preview has been enlarged for greater accuracy while selecting. With the color chosen, we can add the swatch to our palette and lock the palette to prevent any further changes. Palettes can be exported as a shared asset across users or imported back into SOLIDWORKS so the accurate colors can be applied into the design phase. The previous eight color selections will also remain in recent colors across all sessions. This dramatically enhanced color management system ensures that your exact color is never more than a click away. The color matched appearances are now ready to be applied to the pattern, and the Appearance Import option provides a single drag replacement of all bodywork appearances. With the scene set, it's time for final renders. Visualize 2023 introduces a new rendering engine with the Stellar Physically Correct option. This enhancement sets up Visualize for a future of exciting new features and tighter integration with the entire portfolio of products. Visualize is awesome. These, these renderings are beautiful. They're really powerful. And I want to keep in mind, or I want to reiterate that Visualize runs outside of SolidWorks. So if you have anybody in the marketing department who is maybe good at graphic design and wants these assets to be able to build their information, you can actually give them their own installation of Visualize and they can work on your models. They're not going to be able to mess anything up with your CAD designs, but to be able to leverage them on their own quickly and easily. I love the ability to import a style swatch uh, and a lot of other enhancements across the board just to continue to build this product uh, and make it much more powerful. So let's go ahead and take a look at PDM. We're going to manage some data uh, between the imagery and the documentation and the CAD models. We need to make sure that we're organized. Kick it away with Chris Souter in Atlanta. Now, as you all know, SolidWorks PDM Professional has long been the standard for on-premise data management for SolidWorks. With the 2023 release, it's once again raised the bar for usability, performance, and security. Now, access to complete and accurate data is critical to getting any design released. For 2023, static text in the data card can now be copied and pasted into any field, reducing errors. Property field data now supports custom tooltips, ensuring users know exactly what to enter, and button controls can be linked directly to user data, making it easy to find and fill card fields. Administrators can also include user information as variables for both transitions and revision comments, providing improved design history. And for greater clarity, the Get dialog now includes last saved and revision information. Automated workflow notifications are fundamental to keeping design teams informed. For PDM Pro 2023, administrators now have access to full HTML notification editor, allowing them to customize the content of the notifications. Images can be added to support corporate branding and columns can provide recipients additional insight into custom properties. Creating and consuming design deliverables is crucial for working with others. For customers licensed to use SolidWorks MBD, the convert task now supports the creation of step 242 files, further enable model-based workflows. For eDrawing users, Windows Explorer supports thumbnail previews, making it easy to visually identify the file. And the full PDM preview now utilizes Microsoft Edge Control, allowing for the viewing of HTML5 content. For administrators, common tasks have become more efficient. Admins can now configure automatic login to the administration tool, streamlining their access. Task host servers can be removed from the execution list, helping to avoid confusion. And user management is enhanced to include the ability to restore deleted users, as well as the ability to revoke access for multiple users at one time. 
For users that have been assigned to groups, a new pop-up provides visibility to where a user has inherited a, a specific permission and can be pinned in place for easy comparison. Finally, performance and security are significantly enhanced in PDM Pro 2023. Common archive server activities like adding, removing, and transitioning files will see significant performance improvement in higher latency environments. To ensure increased security of your valuable IP, all traffic between clients and the archive server is now encrypted, and a new get log can be enabled to ensure traceability of document retrieval from the vault. Those data card improvements are big. Anybody who's a PDM administrator is absolutely just going nuts right now. A uh, lot of fantastic enhancements that really are going to elevate how powerful and useful PDM is to your organization. But not everybody has the ability to go through an implementation to build up a PDM vault. It's 100% worth the investment. But if for any reason you just can't go through that on-premise investment to set up a server, build a vault, and implement it, we do have something that's just as powerful, if not more powerful, with new features and, and capabilities and requires very little setup. And that's the 3D Experience platform. It's got data management built in. It's basically part of the package. But this platform has all these other tools across an absolutely staggering array of capabilities and industries to help you to put everything all in one platform and collaborate with your team. Now, a lot of you have seen us pushing 3D Experience Platform and saying, this is the future. And I've heard a lot of people sort of come to me and say, hey, I'm afraid that you guys are replacing right? Desktop products that you're going to get rid of my favorite tools on desktop and replace them with the cloud. And it's not the case. I've gotten confirmation from SolidWorks that they are absolutely not going to do that. But let's talk about what they are doing right now. They have developed this fantastic lineup of tools to help you get through all of the major types of tasks that you need to do as a design and manufacturing company. And they've also developed a suite of tools on the cloud that allow you to do a lot of those same things, but without on-premise hardware, and uh, in some cases do it in much more advanced uh, ways or different approaches than what you're used to on the desktop tools. Now, you do not need to go full desktop or full cloud to realize the benefits. A lot of the development teams and a lot of the capabilities that exist in one get ported over to the other. And so we're seeing tons of cross development between the different two different sets of tools. But more than that, you have the ability to pick and choose your favorite parts and pieces from each one. If you need to have everything off the cloud because of ITAR or something like that, you can go full desktop and completely unplug from the internet. Or if you're a company where you got a lot of people working from home, a lot of people kind of out in the field, and you don't want to have to set up these complex VPN networks uh, to try to keep everybody connected, you can go ahead and pick and choose the pieces from each solution set that best match you. So whether that's the, the ease and the simplicity of cloud data management, or the absolute just ridiculous amount of power coming out of Simulia and Abacus, on the 3D Experience platform, you pick and choose the tools that make the most sense for you and your company, and you get to benefit from this combined development team. Let's illustrate that. Jared Degater out of Lafayette, Louisiana, is gonna show us how we use PDM on the cloud to collaborate using both desktop and cloud solutions at the same time, adding value to each other. Collaborative Designer for SolidWorks connects your traditional SolidWorks desktop to the 3D Experience platform. There's minimal configuration, so you can literally be up and running within minutes and securely saving your data to the cloud, all directly within your SolidWorks interface. Bookmarks bring the familiarity of a traditional Windows folder structure and help you organize your designs. So with a simple save, your design data is secure your custom properties are extracted, and with built-in lifecycle management, you can control who has access to your designs with a simple maturity state update. 
Oh, and my favorite part, you and your team can access those designs from anywhere with a web browser, whether that's the shop floor, at a customer site, or maybe you're working from home. Let's explore a scenario. Maybe your company's product manager is on site visiting with a supplier to review the product structure. They have direct access to the released designs and with tags and filters, you can quickly visualize which parts need to be made and which parts are buyouts. Got an improvement idea? Well, great news. You can easily capture that feedback from the front lines with markups. Redline sketches convey ideas back to the design team. And now instead of sending napkin sketches and emails, you can simply create a task, assign it, and then drop the markup and the assembly onto the task. Everyone who needs to be informed is informed and the entire process is streamlined. Back on the design side, tasks are accessible directly inside of SolidWorks where you can update the status and even open the attached assembly with a drag and drop. Don't worry, the assembly is brought back down to the local machine for optimal performance. By opening up the markup in the task pane, you can use convenient reference images while making the needed changes. Without a data management system, making changes like this requires a time-consuming rename process to track revisions and versions. But with Collaborative Designer for SolidWorks, you simply bump the ref on the affected part and assembly, and the file references are taken care of automatically. Once the geometry modifications are finished, the built-in search, which is super fast by the way, can help find the perfect piece of hardware to finish the task. Now that the changes are complete, the maturity state can be moved to released and the task can be finalized. So that cloud PDM, it works just like PDM where it's gonna cache the file locally, open it up, it's gonna give you awesome lifecycle and revision management that doesn't require a bunch of manual effort. Uh, it's easily accessible in a browser, whether that's on your phone or anything else. And those design data, right, where it's, it's aware of your hierarchy and your features have automated the ability to create tasks, link that work back and forth, uh, and keep a full history and audit trail. And again, almost zero setup required to get this up and running in your organization. It's plug and play. So let's say you've got your files on the cloud, or perhaps you don't, but you do need some advanced design capabilities in freeform modeling. If you're using surfacing, you know that there are some things that are lacking in surfacing. It gives you a ton of control, but not a lot of flexibility. So let's take a look at what XShape does for us on the 3D Experience Cloud and how that can be utilized with your existing desktop assets. Let's see how we can leverage X shape to complete a sleek and really stylish exterior for this sea scooter design. Our new component is going to start with a few reference images and then we'll drop some primitive shapes that give us an easy starting point. We can then push, pull, scale, and even rotate the sub D elements to sculpt any type of shape that we can imagine. You can add or remove edges, or subdivide faces if you need more localized control. And the great thing is that curvature continuity is maintained automatically, so you don't have to worry about that. If you need a sharp edge, all you have to do is just add a crease and you can make those adjustments on the fly. Now, I know that we all like to think that we can design everything ourselves and we don't need any help from anyone, but the truth is that the design world of today is more collaborative than ever before. Fortunately, with XShape and the 3D Experience platform, we have built-in tools like pop-up notifications and task management that makes it really easy to collaborate on design projects. One of my favorite features in XShape is the ability to align sub-D elements to sketches or model geometry from other components. So this allows you to achieve a really high level of precision with numeric inputs, so you can be as precise as you need to be. You can turn on symmetry to automatically mirror changes, add more material with the extrude command, or even insert a brand new sub D model. We can make irregular selections with the lasso tool. And my favorite, you can align sub D elements to a curve that can be drawn right on the screen. You've really got to try this out with using something like an iPad. It's, it's just super intuitive. Sometimes manipulating a, a sub D body 
can cause surfaces to intersect. And that's where the mesh inspection tool really comes into play and allows us to isolate these issues. We can even use the cage view and that makes it pretty easy to just refine these problematic areas. The net surface command allows you to create sub D surfaces based on pre-existing sketches or curves, which lets them be very precise. And then you can push and pull these sub D surfaces as needed using the flexibility of sub D modeling. So it's like you're marrying precision with flexibility. Multiple sub D bodies can then be combined into a master model and split up into individual components for manufacturing. And finally, handing off the design once you're finished with it is as easy as dragging the updated model into a task and then moving it to the complete phase, which is going to notify any of the appropriate parties. Manufacturing details can then be added in XDesign or in SolidWorks Desktop, so you can use whatever application you want to choose. And as these designs continue to evolve, you can make new revisions with the built-in cloud data management, or you can even create a branch whenever it's time to explore a completely different concept. Those capabilities are absolutely amazing, right? The ability to do organic modeling, uh, to clean things up, and the collaboration is built in. But not only that, you can go in and you can finish out your design in desktop SOLIDWORKS. So if you like to build your molds inside SOLIDWORKS, but you like to be able to do surfacing and freeform modeling in the cloud, there's no problem doing that. Those files are going to go back and forth very easily, and you're going to be able to get your job done in the way you prefer to do it. If you decide to kind of lean into the cloud even more, we actually can do a lot of cloud capabilities in XDesign, uh, and it's not a replacement for SOLIDWORKS, although you'll notice the sketching, the features, everything looks a lot of the same, but it's got a very different focus and has some new tool sets that we will never have or don't have in desktop. So see if you can watch those, and we'll see what Kaylee has to show us about XDesign. I'm going to continue working on the CDU in XDesign. My first task is to create a new component for my battery enclosure. Once this has been created, I'm going to start out with a sketch. Now in XDesign, we're going to notice many on-screen capabilities to drag sketches. Even with sketch fillets, we can simply drag around the corners to trim them to create those smaller gradii. XDesign also utilizes super features, allowing us to switch between extrusions, revolves, and sweeps without having to recreate the feature. This is ideal for this gasket groove, which is actually a swept cut. User parameters allow us to create predefined dimensions to update and drive many different components so that our model updates as expected. Inside of features, we now have command parking, which gives us access to commonly used items such as sketches that we can launch at any time. This makes those items very easily available to us. Now, inside of my sketch, I have a series of circles that I'm using to create a couple of bosses. If I do a multi-select for all of those, I can make use of the design assistant to create extra instances. The design assistant uses artificial intelligence to make predictions on where additional instances should be placed. And it's a phenomenal way to create lots of sketch entities with minimal work and effort. Even when applying fillets, if we apply our initial fillets, we can then use the design assistant to predict the placement of the others. Direct editing by selecting faces is very fast and efficient. Also, variable fillets are now fully supported in XDesign and really give us a ton of flexibility to create these very curved and ergonomic transitions. XDesign provides us the ability to also import IDF file types for printed circuit boards. So we now can utilize more file types than ever. We can bring these into an assembly and start mating that with hardware. Again, the design assistant is useful in assemblies as well, giving us predictions on hardware placement. Copy with mates is greatly streamlined, which allows us to set and insert many components quickly and easily utilizing common and standard mates. We can always evaluate the motion of our assembly to make sure everything's gonna be functioning as expected. The 3D Experience platform provides tons of collaboration for our team. We can have posts, we can also do markups where we can see 
work that needs to be done, such as adding logos or adding threads. We can drag components from tasks, from issues, to open them so we can add in that sketch, even open up this particular design to add in the specific threads. The thread tool gives us the ability to add standard thread information into the model and is ideal for those 3D printing projects. So very similar to SolidWorks and a lot of people I think freaked out when they saw X Design and thought, man, that's, that's a replacement for SolidWorks. But really it's a new approach to a very similar task. Notice how easy and fluid it is to make those changes to things like fillets, to extrusions. Uh, you don't need to create a ton of history. You don't have to choose between a multi-body part or an assembly. You got a lot of fluidity. But that fluidity is not great when you're in a very controlled sustainment in operation, such as in full production. So don't be surprised if you've got people in product development or sort of concept design phases that prefer to use X design. And then as they start to get more mature and the details need to be handled much more clearly and, and, and carefully, that you go over to the desktop tools. Let's take another example uh, that where the cloud offers tremendous capability and kind of a new focus, and that's in simulation. John Duffin's gonna show us the desktop analysis capabilities, and then we're gonna kind of jump into some of the more advanced stuff in a second. Let's isolate and zoom in on the presser foot assembly. We can see that this handle uses a cam and follower design to raise the foot away from the fabric. The follower is held in place by a strong spring that holds the fabric down while sewing. Our design requires that the spring is strong enough to keep enough pressure on the fabric, but not too strong, making it difficult to raise the lever. We need to test multiple spring stiffnesses until we get it right. For a long time in SOLIDWORKS simulation, we've been able to run design studies to help automate the process to answering engineering questions like this. But since there's a slide in contact in this simulation, we could see long solve times when we run the analysis. And that solve time multiplies when you have to run it many times to investigate design changes. But now in SOLIDWORKS simulation 2023, there's a sweet new adjustment called contact penalty stiffness. This option will trade some local accuracy around the area of contact for much faster solve times. This is a great option for validating setup on complicated assemblies or running multiple iterations in search for an optimized design. In this head-to-head -head comparison, when the contact penalty stiffness is set to its lowest value, the simulation runs significantly faster. After you find the optimal design, you can change the penalty stiffness back to the highest level to get accurate results in the area of contact as well. This is personally one of my favorite enhancements of Simulation 2023 because it will value, allow you to evaluate designs at a speed that has previously not been possible. Looking at the needle bar assembly, we want to ensure the needle clamp is strong enough to take on the repetitive forces from the needle. To simplify this assembly, we'll remove the set screws from the analysis. New in SOLIDWORKS Simulation 2023, we have more flexibility when creating bonded contacts between non-touching faces at extreme angles to one another. Like the threaded holes for this set screw and the flat cutout of the needle bar, you can add this bonded connection without any additional setup. One important note is that it doesn't matter if these sewing machine files came from the new 3D Experience app in the cloud with XShape and the design apps, or if they came from your typical desktop SOLIDWORKS. They can all be used back and forth in collaboration with each other. The upper shaft assembly has several plastic injection molded parts with complex geometry that could require some advanced meshing and mess investigation. In the training classes I teach, I go over all of the primary tools to help validate your setup, but some of these tools could be difficult to find if you didn't remember exactly where they were. New in the command manager is the diagnostic tools flyout menu that provides quick access to important tools to validate your study, like the mesh quality diagnostics. We quickly detect some poor quality elements that will require mesh refinement to ensure accurate results. For those using SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional and higher, the under constrained bodies command, which is used to help validate and troubleshoot your simulation setup, has been greatly improved. The solver now performs a singular value decomposition, which basically means that it's a ton faster than previous versions and supports contact interactions. We'll also see far more realistic feedback of complex under-constrained systems like this thread take-up mechanism. 
And for some premium users, the virtual linkage rod connector, which was introduced last year, is now available for non-linear static and dynamic studies. It will work perfect here to help simplify the analysis and speed up runtime. Changing end conditions, offsetting the link, and dimensioning the rod will replicate its exact function in the analysis. SOLIDWORKS Simulation 2023 will speed up the analysis process with new enhancements for every designer. So a lot of these enhancements in the contact, whether it's faster sliding contact or uh, more advanced bonding techniques, a lot of those are actually being pulled from the development team at Abacus, at Simulia. And that's because the two product teams have been integrated and they're sharing a lot of data and expertise. So simulation is really taking advantage of some advanced simulation capabilities. Uh, and those advanced capabilities are natively available on the cloud. So let's take a look at what 3D Experience Simulation has to offer us in terms of areas that we've never really been able to do, things like multi-physics and fracture mechanics. Some of the sewing machine components are defined with custom materials, and they need to be created in 3D Experience. To automate this task, the custom SOLIDWORKS material library can be directly imported. This eliminates the need for the time-consuming and error-prone task of creating materials manually. In these new material objects, the SOLIDWORKS simulation material properties are maintained and converted to Abacus multi-physics properties. Additional properties can then be added to solve real-world behaviors such as the damage properties in the case of this needle break. On the SOLIDWORKS side, we are connected to the centralized 3D Experience material library, allowing for reuse of these enhanced properties on future projects. Additionally, when the simulation study is transferred to the platform, the materials, along with the loads and boundary conditions, are automatically mapped to the newly created structural simulation. Now we can build on top of the simulation by adding a new procedure with an explicit dynamic step so we can solve for the needle break and the response in the sewing machine crank. To reduce the calculation time and local resource demand, we can solve this simulation on Dassault's cloud servers with the included cloud license. The simulation can even be monitored from any device with a web browser while it solves to easily track the convergence and know when results are available. These results suggest there's an opportunity to optimize the design and mass of the needle bar link. Of course, this process is connected as well as the dimensions of interest are simply defined as parameters back in SOLIDWORKS and then selected during a new parametric design study in 3D Experience. With goals of minimizing mass and stress, the best design alternative is then generated so we can perform additional analysis and update the SOLIDWORKS assembly with the optimal part model. A durability analysis allows us to evaluate how long the link will last for a defined fatigue loading. The results identify where and when the link will fail first, but is it possible to increase the lifespan without actually changing the geometry? One idea may be to modify the surface finish, and we can do these in the weak areas only, which minimizes the amount of manufacturing necessary to create a long lasting part. Of course, all our work is managed and automatically backed up in 3D experience. And since all the data is on the platform, the details can be easily viewed in 3D in any web browser. Comments, notes, and changes can be shared with others in the cloud-based environment, streamlining communication throughout the company. I love how they're connecting the desktop and the cloud capabilities and environments so much more so that you can start out your analysis in desktop and take it to the cloud or send it to an analyst and they can continue your work without starting over or having to try to make sure that they're working with apples to apples. And these are some absolutely serious simulations. And you could do term licenses on these uh, and basically avoid some upfront purchase cost uh, to be able to still access really advanced capabilities in simulation. All right, let's go ahead and jump back into uh, desktop SOLIDWORKS and we're gonna talk about assemblies and some of the new enhancements in assemblies with Nadia Shea in Austin. We always utilize assembly patterns to save time and clicks. It also helps with performance. However, we don't always carbon copy everything. 
Assembly level design configurations can sometimes be antithesis to patterns. Not with SOLIDWORKS 2023. Any assembly pattern feature that supports skipped instances can also support configurations, which means less redundant pattern features that require configuring suppression state. Let's keep talking about configurations. Replace component sure beats deleting a component, inserting a new one, fixing mates, analyzing all the impact, especially in a multi-level assembly. I don't have time for that. I have candy to crush. You'll see options in 2023 to control replacement on various assembly levels, such as sub-assembly, parent assembly, or top level. You'll also see a preview window, which is an, makes it easy to confirm before proceeding. During the replace command, a rebuild error occurs due to a failed concentric mate. Mismatched face IDs can create the most follow-up work when we use replace components. Boy, do I have a tool for you. Check out Auto Repair, accessed directly from the In Context Toolbar or right-click menu. The Auto Repair tool will look for similar geometry, like the face, the vertex, the edge, and attempt to reattach any missing items. You're welcome. Using configured and non-configured components can make bill of material management, let's call that interesting. We can do it, but it's a bit manual, and sometimes we forget until we're trying to crunch out a drawing for a deadline. In SOLIDWORKS 2023, the option to use configuration name as a default BOM part number is added in the document properties. MLC Pro Tip, configure this in your templates for consistent BOM behavior amongst your team. MLC Premium Tip, get with our programming team and let us automate this option behavior as you upgrade your existing files. Let's move on to such as cuts. This is a critical tool as we ensure proper fit. My favorite end condition is any of the up to end conditions. Because if geometry changes, the features will adjust as well. MLC Pro Tip, use box select to select multiple components. This is really great, but be careful. This grabs toolbox components as well. That might not be ideal if we're using the propagate to parts features. My team won't like short toolbox parts. However, SOLIDWORKS 2023 will automatically remove toolbox components from the selection box and notify you to make sure that you are aware. This is critical if you and your team are using a shared toolbox library. If you work in the architectural, engineering, and construction industry or create products for them, I hope that you're taking advantage of magnetic mates. They are incredibly useful for layouts. If your design or product has configurations, magnetic mates are even more powerful because they are also configurable. You can suppress or unsuppress individual connection points. MLC Pro Tip, magnetic connection points respect visibility of the model that they're attached to, which means hide, isolate, and display states will help you focus on the areas where new connections are taking place. My personal favorite assembly tool is assembly visualization. I find it especially handy to visually analyze my assemblies. In SOLIDWORKS 2023, it's even more useful because functionality is being extended for lightweight mode. You will not need to fully resolve your assemblies to visualize properties such as mass or total weight. Tiny but power UI interface update is that the visualization menu is sorted alphabetically, making it super easy to find the property you remember the name of. Also, the rollback bar has been thickened for an easier mouse grab. Again, you're welcome. SOLIDWORKS will never stop improving large assembly performance. We now have an option to optimize lightweight versus resolve mode. This means that lightweight technology will be utilized as you load components in resolved mode. What does that really mean? It means you will no longer need to manually switch between resolved and lightweight mode, thus minimizing any of your distractions. What about sharing assemblies with others, specifically with neutral file types? <laughs> Step files? In SOLIDWORKS 2023, you can export different assembly levels with the step export options. This means you can automatically create step files for top level, sub levels, and individual parts without having to manually export every level. Just another time saver from us to you. I love the auto repair mate option. That thing is gonna be my jam. Uh, you know, making changes to stuff all the time and you end up kind of cutting away or destroying or replacing a component and getting rid of your mate reference, that's gonna be a big time saver. Uh, and the ability to configure those component patterns, 
Uh, that happens a lot to me where I've got, you know, small, medium, and large options for the design that I'm considering, and I have to kind of create component patterns for each. Huge for me. Uh, let's start adding some of the electrical capabilities to our assemblies with electrical schematic and electrical 3D. And for that, we're going to go over to Cody Owen. Uh, it kind of looks a little bit like Matthew McConaughey, but he's out in Orlando, Florida. Uh, let's see what's new with electrical. We have our mixing motor, and the mixing motor in the 3D model is exactly what it needs to be, but it is not represented correctly in the schematic. So we're going to delete that from the schematic. And when you go to delete one item, well, there's probably multiple symbols representing that one component. And nowadays, when you go to delete it, it's going to report back the impact and the options to remove the components from all the drawings and those 3D associations. Okay, now that we have removed our symbols, what we want to do is we want to recreate that just using one of our macros here. And for SOLIDWORKS 2023, they've actually introduced something else with the manufacturer's parts properties specifically. And that these properties that you see here for the control, the use, the voltage, the description, all of that can be found inside of the file properties of the actual 3D component. What? That's awesome, right? <laughs> even, even the mass, you can actually set the mass inside of SOLIDWORKS Electrical and have that trickle down to your model inside of SOLIDWORKS Mechanical. New for SOLIDWORKS 2023 is the ability to add dynamic connection labels. Sometimes you just want to label for the specific component that you're looking at, and this will automatically update the columns and rows depending on the information that you have with it. Now to take a look at SOLIDWORKS Electrical 3D, where you know, this is an invaluable tool for uh, finding out wire lengths and everything else. Well, over here on the left-hand side of your screen in the component tree, you can see that now there's a couple of quick filter buttons up here at the top. This first button allows you to expand and collapse the entire tree, where the one on the left hides the components that have already been associated to your uh, components in the graphics area. And you can see a distinct difference between the two. Uh, the one that looks like a SOLIDWORKS part has been associated to the 3D component in the graphics area with what's in electrical, and the ones that are kind of grayed out still need to be associated. And speaking of association, now you can associate multiple components at one time. Less clicks, more efficient, period. So hopefully everybody will get a really good kick out of that one. All right, now that our parts are associated, we get everything routed. What we want to do is we want to take advantage of those reports inside of our 2D schematic tool. And the ability to create reports is very easy, but now you have that extra capability of copying and pasting those reports, or those tables rather, in other locations in the document. And the links that are inside the table are still intact, so you can still use those as needed. One other thing they added was the ability to use multiple types of files when inserting pictures. Before it was just bitmaps, so you'd have to convert it over. Now you've got JPEGs, PNG files, the list goes on. Now that all of our reports are finished, what we want to do is we want to create PDFs of each one of those. In the past, you only had the ability to choose Portrait or Landscape in SOLIDWORKS Electrical 23. You can choose the automatic orientation, which will produce those PDFs in the correct orientation. So really great enhancements to be able to kind of connect the electrical world with the 3D uh, mechanical design. Uh, those reports and bills of materials, being able to move those around really easily. And what's amazing to me is that a lot of people that don't use electrical schematic, one of their biggest pains is creating multi-sheet PDFs. And we can do it in one click, even if your drawing sheets are sizes and orientations are all over the place. So it's really great enhancements to speed up your time there. Let's keep talking about electrical, not just a, a wire harnesses, but other types of routed systems, whether it's uh, pneumatic or hydraulic. And let's take a look with Jeremy Browning in Dallas. This smart refrigerator contains several routed systems, copper for the refrigerant, flexible tubing for the water supply, and electrical harnesses to provide the power and logic circuitry. Designing these systems is a perfect job for SOLIDWORKS routing. Let's take a closer look at the electrical harness for the cooling system. The electrical attributes now display the length and the outer diameter of the harness bundle. 
which is now more accurately calculated and accounts for unused cores. As a bonus, it is now possible to display the bundle cross section. Any unused wires are shown with a dashed line font. A flattened harness drawing communicates manufacturing information and provides an account of all the wires and connectors. A complex harness drawing would typically require a lot of manual editing. New for 2023, auto balloons for both connectors and wires now appear neatly stacked, even if they're deleted and reinserted. This new level of flattened drawing automation saves time and improves accuracy. Now, when you hover on a connector table, it cross highlights the connector symbol. This means you can place a table anywhere on the sheet and it still easily identify its associated symbol. Adding a column to any table now provides a prompt to update all tables at once, eliminating many manual steps. Taking a look at the freezer insert, a late design change calls for adding another fan to the cooling circuit. However, creating a new harness is prohibitive. This is very easily solved by adding a splice to the two wire power cable. New for 2023, splices now support multiple connection points as opposed to requiring a separate splice for each circuit. Reimporting a from to list provides the wire and cable information and prompts you to place any new connectors. The multi circuit splice component snaps into position and guidelines preview the routing paths. These are easily converted to wires and cables providing an accurate depiction of the circuit in 3D. Enhancements to SOLIDWORKS routing provide improved automation to design routed systems and properly document them for manufacture. When you connect SOLIDWORKS to the 3D Experience platform, your routing libraries are automatically cataloged and securely stored in the cloud. This reduces the IT overhead of library management while providing access to your shared data for all users. Man, guys, if you've never done a harness drawing, that, that automatic drawing tool creation is absolutely unbelievable. It puts everything you need, boom, on the sheet. Um, there does need to be some cleanup to make sure everything's clear and put in uh, logical places and using up the page well. But these new enhancements are going to streamline that, simplify it a lot. A lot of great things in electrical uh, beyond even what we've shown here. Um, but let's keep that drawing package going and let's talk about just general enhancements with SOLIDWORKS drawings. For this, we're going to kick it over to the expert's expert, Michael Burks out of Huntsville, Alabama. In 2023, you can now open drawings directly from the feature manager tree. You can also open drawings directly from items inside of a bill of material. So a simple right click and open drawing will open that component in its own window. Also, from any assembly view, you can now right-click and open the drawing of any component inside of that assembly. So in SOLIDWORKS 2023, you now have more ways to be able to get access to your SOLIDWORKS drawings along with all of your assemblies and parts from years past. Let's now open up a drawing that has a bill of material on it. We're going to zoom in to the bottom of the bill of material and we're going to take a look at the empty cell here and we're going to add a modified item. So for item number 15, we're going to add lithium grease as an item in our bill of material. We're going to tab through the different columns and make any necessary changes needed to update this bill of material. Now, what if you would like to see all the modified items in your bill of material? Well, in SOLIDWORKS 2023, that is now an option. So by simply going to your system options, going to colors, and then scrolling down to the drawings and modified sales, you can now change that color to red, or we're gonna change it to red in this case. Then by simply highlighting the bill of material, it's gonna highlight the values to red. We can also take this quantity and in 2023, we can revert it back to its previous value before it was manually modified. We're now gonna take these items and we're gonna insert our balloons. In SOLIDWORKS 2023, we now have easy access to add the quantity to our balloons. So here we simply can change all the settings that we need and our quantities are easily added to all of our balloons. After a little bit of cleanup, you're gonna see here that we have a couple of balloons that have a quantity of one. So technically we don't need the quantity on those. So we'll highlight those individually and just turn off the quantity, giving you complete control over all the quantity items for each balloon in your bill of material. Let's switch over to tab two now. So here we can take a look at this huge bill of material. We have too much, so we wanna kind of filter this thing down. 
So in SOLIDWORKS 2023, we now have filter options inside of all the columns in a bill of material. So here you can see we filtered the maturity down to in work. We'll clear that one. Let's go take a look at part number. So here we can do a conditional filter. Maybe I want to search for everything that starts with a 250. Or maybe I want to do some and or statements to do some really complicated conditional selection. So you can now do that inside of a drawing in SOLIDWORKS 2023. But what if I wanted to filter this down to maybe something like a purchased bill of material? Well, from here, I can take our source and I can filter it down to buy. And then I can also filter our hardware components down to just a yes to just see those components. You'll also notice that in our drawing view, it's also filtered down the balloons to only the things that are visible in our current bill of material. Let's now open up another drawing and let's take a look at this pressure gauge. So you guys know what pressure gauges look like. There's typically a gauge underneath a piece of glass, but here we don't have our glass that's transparent. So we're going to open up the assembly and then let's tile these two together and let's see what we can do as far as making that item transparent. So with these two tiled side by side, I'm going to go to the assembly and I'm going to take that piece of glass and I'm going to mark it transparent. So then inside of SOLIDWORKS 2023, I can select a drawing view and I can now set an option that says see through transparent components to allow me to see through that. That's just for this view. However, in 2023, there is now a document property that allows you to set that globally for that document. So by making that change, any additional views that I add into my drawing in SOLIDWORKS 2023 will automatically have that transparency set. So for those of you that are very drawing centric, you know that you have to open a lot of models to get to the drawings sometimes. So being able to open your drawings from just about anywhere you find that component is gonna save so much time. Uh, and I love the bomb filtering. Uh, one thing I do a lot of times is I'll build a project and then I'll create a sheet for one store, right? For like the lumber sheet. And then the next sheet is going to be the stuff I need to purchase from McMaster car. And then the next sheet is the stuff I got to go down and uh, grab from the plumbing supply store. This would allow me to very quickly filter those lists and then automate that. So I'm not manually splitting things up and trying to uh, keep things updated and displaying the way I like them. Last step in the process, as is a lot of times the case, we need to make sure that what we're putting out is going to work correctly and meet specifications. So let's take a look at inspections with one of our newer employees, Joel Gilbert out of Birmingham, Alabama. For 2023, Standalone Inspection gets a clean new look with a full interface update. This new interface is more concise, making each option clear and easy to identify. The headline news for both current and new users of Standalone Inspection is that the all-new auto-ballooning capability now extends to file formats such as PDF files. The Smart Extract feature has been replaced with the new Auto Extract command. The Auto Extract command is now a one-stop shop that handles auto-ballooning for all supported 2D and 3D file formats. The new Auto Extract functionality provides an enormous jump start to the process and will save huge amounts of time when setting up inspection reports from PDF files. Inspection also brings added intelligence to cases where manual ballooning is used. Manual Extract will now identify the characteristics selected and eliminates the need to switch back and forth between specific tools. The SOLIDWORKS add-in for inspection has also been enhanced to allow inspection setup to be fine-tuned with a set of criteria. Balloon sequences can now be created and named for future use. These sequences set a custom starting point that can be applied for a variety of purposes. Auto extract can now be limited by sheet as well for an added level of control. By default, all sheets will be included with a default starting value. This value can be adjusted so that each sheet can now follow its own sequence or continue on from the previous sheet's numbering. You can take advantage of the power of automated ballooning in more situations than ever before with added control over sheets and sequences. Cleanup and reorganization has been enhanced as well. The characteristic tree now provides a pane where balloon numbering can be viewed and modified by sheet or drawing view. Reordering all balloons at once is now as easy as dragging and dropping to reorder sheets. All balloons involved will automatically be updated immediately. Likewise, reordering a drawing view results in the same effect. In the characteristic table, balloons can be reordered by view or manually dragged. 
The expansion of per sheet control includes the export of multiple sheets as well. Just like creating balloons per sheet, the export options now allow for control over included sheets per document. This applies to PDF exports as well as Excel outputs. Man, I love the ability to auto extract from 2D formats. Uh, that's always been an option in 3D and it was absolutely so fast that I would usually auto balloon it in 3D, save the project and then finish everything up in the 2D standalone. So this is gonna save me some time, save me some steps and really speed things up. Um, a lot of great enhancements there, but there's just simply too much to talk about in this short amount of time. I want to try to keep us under an hour with the Q&A, so I'm going to defer you to a live event to get more details. Get hands-on, spend time with experts, ask questions, uh, try it out for yourself, and if you run into a question or run into an issue, talk it over with people over food and drinks. So register now at mlc-cad.com. You're definitely not going to want to miss these events, but we'll stop here. Take any questions that you have and really look forward to seeing everybody in person, finally, face to face uh, at one of our local events. Thanks all for attending.